Cumberland County. We're a small county, but we have a lot of history. Our first pioneer was in 1828 in Johnstown. Next one was John Tully in 19, 1829 in Sconces Bend, which is a uh, large uh, bend in the river. At one point, it goes backwards. And then our first actual settlement was in Johnstown in 1830. All the settlements in our first, at the first, were around the river, uh, the upper Ambra, because the lower part of the county was swamp, and the eastern and western parts were prairie land, and they didn't think anything would grow there, so they settled along the river. In 1832, the National Road came through. This was the deciding point for Cumberland County and Greenup. In 1843, Cumberland County, by act of legislature, was divided from Coles County, and we were named for the National Road, and so we were named Cumberland. And we had 336 square miles, 2,000 residents in Cumberland County at that time, so it was quite populated. In 1832, Ira Rose settled down in the area of Greenup and it was called Ambrol, spelled uh, like the Ambrol River in Barris. <laughs> Some people call it Rossville, and then Mr. Beale came along, bought it, and called Bealeville. And then in eight, uh, 1834, Greenup was platted and named for W.C. Greenup, who was the owner of the ground. Prairie City, was platted in 1855, and this was then made the county seat. And through the years, there was quite a few elections for the county seat, because at first Greenup was the county seat. Then they had the, several people said, but Greenup's on the east side of the river, we can't get across, so they had an election. Well, Toledo won. Then they had another one, Greenup one, back and forth, and finally Toledo won, and it was platted, but it was called Prairie City at the time. In 1874, they found that Prairie City was already taken as a post office, so they had to come up with another name. The name Toledo, or Majority Point, went on the ballot. Toledo won, but because of mix-up, a lot of maps uh, it was printed majority point, but it was officially Toledo. In 1857, they built a courthouse in Toledo. That was the first, before that, it, the records were just wherever. That burnt in 1885. All records were lost. And then they built a new one after that, which is the one standing now. 1856, Neoga was platted. And this was more or less because of the railroad that went through. It was the uh, Illinois Central Railroad went through. And so there was a reason for people to settle and build around that. And so they could get their crops and whatever out. In 1883, another railroad track went through from the parish to St. Louis. And this, so at one time, Neoga had two railroad tracks going through that. So... And it was a, they had a lot of, they had apple orchards, they had vinegar uh, plant, and apple cider plants, and they at one time were the hay capital of the world. And Neoga is our only certified city in Cumberland County. The rest of us are villages. In 1844, Pleasantville was platted. This was also called Tower Town because if someone built a tower, they called it Tower Town. And this was just west of what is now called Jewett. And that was platted in 1870. And this was more or less because of the railroad that went through before that. 1866, Hazeldale was platted. It's in the southeast corner of the county. And the name came around a little odd because, for one thing, there was only one 
Hazeldale in the whole United States. But this man named Cook had written a ballad about Hazeldale. Everyone was singing about Hazeldale. So when it came time to, we need a name for our little community, the mayor's daughters said, Hazeldale. And so it was Hazeldale. And Hazeldale at one time had everything you needed. It was a bustling burg. The, the saying was, you can be born, live, and die in Hazeldale and have everything you need. In 1877, they built their first uh, brick schoolhouse. And at Hazeldale, with being where it was located and things, when consolidation started in 1948, 10 schools in that area consolidated to Hazeldale. So they had a graded school. They had a train car called the Doty that would take the students, the high school students, from Hazeldale and beyond up to Casey to high school each day and bring them back home. But Hazeldale had quite a bit going on for a while, but it got bypassed by the big roads and things like this. Hazeldale was, as, as I said, a bustling town. And we have the map, it shows it had several blocks, two churches, big school, but in 1925 and 1937, there were fires. And most of the, the buildings were uh, wood. And these fires wiped out whole blocks, whole sides of the street. They did not rebuild, and so Hazeldale died. There are still people living there and still things going on. In the 1920s in Hazeldale, they decided they wanted a soldier's monument. And so they got together, got the money together, and put it in the driveway to the Church of God Cemetery on the south side of the Hazeldale blacktop. And it's still there today. The first church was in 1864. And Today, there is a church, you drive into Hazeldale, there's a cemetery on each side of the road and a church on each side of the road. In 1940, Irene Hollinsby had the first beauty shop in Hazeldale. And she had one of these great big monstrosity electronic perm machines in her shop. And a perm was $2.50. The shampoo and set was 50 cents in 1940. And I was told the uh, machine is now in a museum. Don't know which one, but it is in a museum. We had several other small towns around Cumberland County. Timothy, Rainsburg. Rainsburg was only there because it, they wanted in one of the elections for county seat. They platted it. It didn't win. It's back to farm ground. There was Union Center, Long Point, uh, Bradbury, Woodbury, uh, Diona, Croak, and Roslyn, and many, many more. Our first jail in Cumberland County was a rotten gum tree in Sconces Bend. They would put a ladder up to it, put the prisoner in, put a board across it, take the ladder away. This lasted for years until one prisoner, trying to climb out, knocked the tree over. He got away. They didn't get him back. Our first actual jail was in Toledo. It was a brick building, two sides. The family lived in one side, the cells were in the other. There were four cells. Two were made of uh, iron, two were made of oak. Each cell was seven by seven by seven. And they had no accommodations for female prisoners, although all the time the jail was in effect, they only had one. And at one time, they had 13 to 14 people in one jail cell. In 1873, they put together the first poorhouse in Cumberland County. It was a frame build. And later they built the large brick. And the family that took care of the place would live in one side, and the people were in the other side. 
men on one floor, women on another. And as they, when they went there, they had to work on the farm because the farm was pretty much self-sufficient. And I have been asked, well, do you have a list of people that, in the, that were buried there? No. If you were buried at the poor farm, you didn't want anyone to know. So we do not have that record. Our schools in Cumberland County. The first school in the area was in 1828, and it was just across the line in Coles County, because at that time we were part of Coles County. In 1840, a Mrs. Owens started a school as a music school, but it quickly turned into a school, and it was just two, two miles south of Janesville, which is just barely into Cumberland County. In 1948, we had 102 country schools. Each school was set up in a district so that no student would have to walk more than two miles. And so a lot of these stories that I walked 10 miles through, you know, hip deep snow, no, sorry. There were graded schools in Toledo, Greenup, Jewett, Neoga, and Hazeldale. All the rest of them, they might have higher grades, lower grades, but most of them were one room schools. Some were stick built, some were brick. Greenup was the first brick schoolhouse. In 1850, we had 17 schools through the county. In 1881, there were 90 schools with 5,525 students. That was all the students in Cumberland County. I checked now, Cumberland County, we have 1,721. That's all the schools in Cumberland County. The school, country schools were consolidated in 1948, and at that time, most of them went to Greenup, Toledo, Jewett, Hazeldale, and Neoga. Some lasted a little bit longer, but not very long. The high school came into being in 1954, Cumberland High School. Neoga kept their high school. And in 1967, the elementary students went from Green, Toledo, and Jewett to the Cumberland School. The Neoga kept their schools. Churches in Cumberland County. In 1830, there were camp meetings about once a year. And they were usually Methodist, sometimes strong Presbyterians, very few. The first church building was in 1841. West of the river was the Salem Church. It is still there today. Not the same building, but it is still in the same place. In 1843, the first church east of the river was the Long Point Church. They no longer have services there. And I have been able to find about 60 churches in Cumberland County. We used to have about every mile there would be a country church. Now there's not. And in our history books, they tell a little story. A minister was riding to his, riding his horse to his Sunday uh, church. And oh, what am I going to talk about? He's riding along and he found, grabbed a hazelnut as he was going through the woods. And he, oh, okay. So he gets up on the pulpit, and this is in our history book. And he says, okay, the burr on the hazelnut, it shows the church. But it's easily pulled away. Inside is the soft hull. That's the Baptist. It, too, easily pulled away. Inside that is a harder hull. It's a little harder to crack, but that's the hardcore Baptist. And inside this is the true kernel of the church, the Christian church. He pops it open, a black-headed worm came out. He ended his sermon, and a few weeks later, he ended his career with the church. Our cemeteries, there are 81 known burial plots in Cumberland County. They are all recorded. They have been read twice. The most are well kept, but some, as some are not at all kept. Some 
They're piled around a tree. And I am still finding where the only record of some people's death is an old newspaper. So, and we do have this on our website. Cumberland County, as I said, we're small. We have a lot of history. We have no stoplights in Cumberland County, and we only have one city. Cumberland County, at one time, we had five railroads. In 1855, the Illinois Central crossed the northwest corner. In 1869, the St. Louis to Terre Haute went through along the National Road. In 1877, the Grayville to Mattoon. It went through Greenup, through Toledo, and up to Mattoon. In 1882, the Danville, Ohio, Olney went through Hazeldale. And in 1883, the Paris to St. Louis. That was the second one through Neoga. And our, one thing with our county, we had a lot of veterans from, we have one uh, Revolutionary War veteran buried in Cumberland County. We had a lot of Civil War, World War I, World War II, Korea, and all the wars. And we're very proud of our veterans. It's important uh, in Cumberland County to preserve our history because our Children need to learn where they come from, and it is so rewarding at the museum to see the little faces going, wow, when they learn something about the history of Cumberland County.